used to harm or take away life. This here used to be a barrel of gun, looked like this. Now being repurposed to help plant new life. We're hearing from someone who's been affected by gun violence and then inviting the community that's present here today to take a turn with the hammer and helping us turn a gun into a garden tool. It starts as a typical gun buyback event. People who turn their guns in receive compensation, but Mike and his Raw Tools team have a plan for what these guns can do. Our mission is to disarm hearts, forge peace, and cultivate justice. And we do that by turning guns into garden tools, introducing people to resources that are alternative means of conflict resolution, like de-escalation and mediation. This effort began after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in 2012. Since then, more than 1,000 guns have been through the process. But there's been a new push in the last two years, coinciding with a spike in gun violence, a significant increase during the pandemic, leading to more than 20,000 gun deaths in 2021. So these buyback programs are a great idea for public messaging and for changing the culture. If we start to associate guns with negative messages, so we celebrate the destruction of guns, that's probably a good thing for our culture. We have 400 million guns in circulation, and any contribution to reducing that is helpful. The idea of the transformation comes from a Bible verse about turning a sword into a plow. This, a modern interpretation that also serves the psychological effects of those impacted by gun violence. I lost my cousin to uh, gang violence when I was a senior in high school here in Denver. He was um, murdered at a gas station during a gang conflict. It was really, really powerful to think about the literal reshaping of a thing of violence into something that's going to help cultivate and grow. And so just an, an actionable thing that you can do to try to help stop the gun violence. I took my frustrations out on the gun. I felt better. I loved it. Charlotta Evans knows that frustration firsthand. What drives me is the loss of my son. Kason Xavier Evans, um, I lost him to gun violence. Children having possessions of guns, not being responsible with guns. Adults not being responsible with guns. Her three-year-old son killed in a drive-by shooting by Raymond Johnson, who was just a teenager at the time. I went to go hand Kason over to the paramedics and <sighs> took his last breath in my arms. Speaking ahead of the gun buyback event at this church service, Evans has since forgiven the shooter, helping abbreviate his prison sentence and mentoring him as her own son, she says. Now, she uses her story to speak out against irresponsible gun ownership and the potential for restorative justice. We just cannot be um, self-centered about our gun ownership as if it's not hurting anyone else. What do you make of, of those spikes in gun violence that we've seen so recently? You know, we say the cliche, hurt people hurt people, and but it is an actual fact. And uh, we're looking at a lot of uh, mental health issues, um, a lot of trauma that's been untreated. And we really have to take a look at the lives of our youth uh, because these youth are growing up into adults that have not yet been healed. It's a powerful way to end that piece. Moore joins us now from Chicago. Moore, thank you for doing that story for us. We really appreciate it. Um, talk a little bit more, right, about, I mean, listen, this, this is raising awareness for people. Are there other policies that this dovetails with, right? Like, it feels like the bigger impact is going to be not just this program alone, but a cohesive orchestra almost of other policies and programs to get people to make a change. Exactly. And it's the idea of the fact that these guns are being recycled, right, Hallie, not just taken off the streets and then who knows what happens with them, right? Because from a national level, it's really hard here in America for there to be this national effort of a gun buyback. This one specific program has taken a thousand guns off the street. But when you look at the larger picture of 400 million guns in circulation here, there's a big delta. And so something that experts are pointing to are actually is actually something that can be accomplished state by state rather than through Congress. And that's mandatory reports of stolen or lost guns, because often we lose them in circulation. And so the quicker we can get them out of circulation, recycled through a program like this, other programs have melted down the metal and repurposed them. That's one way to not lose track of guns once they go out of circulation, even through these buybacks. Uh, that can be one more effort that can be accomplished, not necessarily at a national level. So this is a start, but there's obviously a lot more work, a lot more conversation that needs to be had about it, Hallie. Maura Barrett, thank you again for bringing us tonight's original. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.